After all the manufacturing activities have been confirmed, it's time to post goods receipt for our finished material. Let's go to transaction MB31. I insert movement type 101, the process order number, and then press enter. The system is proposing to create goods receipt for the planned production quantity. Enter a storage location here if the field is empty. Also tick delivery completed checkbox, which means that we are confirming that this is the final quantity to be received and no more will be manufactured for this order. I press enter and the system will post a material document for the goods receipt. Let's open material price analysis transaction and examine what was posted to material ledger. We can see that a material ledger document was posted for the finished pulp related to the goods receipt. No price difference was recorded as the standard price of the material was used for the posting. Let's also take a quick look at the process order one more time. I open transaction COR3. Under Go To, I will select Costs and then Analysis. You can see the cost collected by the process order from this column. The column is saying Total Actual Costs but here I want to give you a very important reminder what the system means with actual costs here. The raw material costs are calculated using the standard prices maintained for the materials for the period and not the actual costs that would be calculated using actual cost functionality. Also, the activity costs are calculated using planned costs and not actual costs. So keep in mind that the term actual here is a little bit misleading. We have now finished the third chapter of our course. So far, we have seen how different types of price differences are recorded to the material ledger as material ledger documents and also examined the financial accounting postings related to the price differences. This has all been very important to learn, but everything we have done so far has just been preparation for the next chapter. In the next and last chapter of the course, we will see how the system is performing actual costing and calculation prices for our materials using actual costs that occurred during a period. But before we start our period end process, I want you to create one additional process order for a large quantity of pulp. Our pulp mill is producing around 40,000 tons of pulp per month, so you can create a process order for a quantity around 40,000 tons. We will also be needing one incomplete order so we can examine how WIP orders are handled during month end process. So create an order and confirm activities for it, but do not post goods receipt for finished pulp. After you have finished creating the orders, I will see you in the next chapter.